Hello there and welcome back to linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Sean Joseph and my email is shopopolos at gmail.com and if you have any questions please feel free to email me and I'll be sure to answer them for you. For today we would be look, doing RECSA exam. We'll be looking at some of the requirements for the RECSA exam and I'll be preparing you. So first I go to the Red Hat website and as you can see this is the Red Hat website here and we look at some of the requirements that they have for the exam and as I said in the last video this is actually very simple the exam there are only seven modules there understanding and using uh, essential tools and number two and configuring number three number four number five number six and number seven for today we would be looking at number seven which is managing security and actually this is all access control and I will explain quickly how to do these things and what you need for the exam so now to do the exam you can actually go to our website here which is linuxjobber.com and let me show you the website here it says linuxjobber.com up here this is the website and you go to videos RHCSA exam and you'll be able to access the exam videos over there so back to our tutorial there are two parts to the tutorial one is the actual videos here that actually give you step by step of the exam and the other part is the explanation where I explain what you need the access control I give you an overview of what, of what this thing is about and I explain exactly what's going on once you understand what's going on it is easier for you to understand the actual exam and the knowledge that Red Hat is trying to get you to acquire but if you just understand what you're doing but not necessarily understand the big picture you will not be able to retain that knowledge long term so please try to understand what is actually happening and in the real in the actual step-by-step -step video I will explain and I'll actually do the work and you get to see everything that you need so let me explain what is actually happening so the knowledge that Red Hat wants you to get which is what I highlighted here and it's on their website this is public information is actually all about access control what does access control mean access control really means that this is your computer here your computer has resources the resources can be folders can be files can be system resources like your drives or audio or anything else so let's just label these resources as I K and M or maybe even J K and M these are the resources that a computer has and now the question is how do you protect these resources from unauthorized access that's all what managing security is about protecting computer resources from unauthorized access so now there are three main types of access control you have to understand that part first everywhere you go you have to understand what kind of access control are they using and how does it work so let's look at the first one here discretionary access control this is actually the traditional Linux access control what does this mean this means that this user a here let's label this user as a subject is trying to access this system resources here and let's call this the objects so if this user created these objects <clears throat> they he or she would actually always have access to these objects and that's the traditional Linux control and also if the owners of this object so in case the user did not create the objects the owners of the objects or whoever has permissions if they give this user access to these objects now the user can just access the objects because they have because somebody has just given them access to it that's just how this discretionary access control works it's actually very simple if you have access to it by um, the user groups and ownership permission then you can access it very simple well the mandatory access control doesn't work that way actually this is where SC Linux which is the bulk of what they are talking about here if you look very well you see SC Linux all over the place right so this is what Red Hat is concerned about 
understanding SC Linux. So if you look at here, here SC Linux is actually categorized under mandatory access control. Now for the mandatory access control, how does it work? Let's try to understand how it works very quickly. The way it works is that this user does not always have access to these resources just because they created it or just because somebody gave them access to it. So the way this works is, is that these objects, let's label them, right? So let's say these objects are labeled one and we label this two and we label this three. So what happens is, is that this user, if this user has a level, access level of one, since J is the only object that has access level up to one, then this user can access J. Does, can J, can the user A access K? No, because the user has access up to level one. The user does not have access up to level two. So the user cannot access two and cannot access three. But if this user has access level two, then the user can actually access level one and level two, but the user cannot access M. So this is all about the levels. So that's how SC Linux works. It thinks of it thinks in terms of what is the access level of the user and you always have to have that in mind so I'm gonna draw the arrow from the user to the resource that they have and they do not have access to resource M which is level of three or higher so that's how mandatory access control works so now I will explain role-based access control just for you to understand how it works. Role-based access control actually depends on the role of this X. So the user is not actually accessing the resource or the objects J, K, and M by themselves. Only the role, only this role here is accessing this resources so the role either has access to the resource or the role does not the user doesn't care it doesn't matter to the user so what happens is is that the user just just needs to know whether or not he has access to can can attain the level of row x or cannot so if the user can take on the role of x then the user automatically has access to all these objects or computer resources if the user cannot attain row x then the user just cannot have access to all those things as you can see look at the arrows here and you'll be able to understand how all these things work very very simple this is very very simple so now we're going to concentrate on se linux because that is where our access that is where that is what um Red Hat wants us to concentrate on because I see it all over the place here. Look, SC Linux here, SC Linux here, SC Linux here, SC Linux here. So we want to concentrate on SC Linux. Now, if you are ready to actually take the exam and you are serious about passing the exam, you want to go to Linux Java vid uh, videos. We have helped uh, lots of students pass this exam and we can help you pass this exam. And you go to RACSA exam and we'll be will be giving you the resources that will help you pass this exam again as i said before my own name is shown joseph and my email is showpopulous at gmail.com so if you do have questions don't forget to email me and i'll be sure to answer your questions for you thank you very much for watching this video and uh, enjoy your day